Hello. Hello and welcome to this video from libreprogramming.org. In this part, we will learn about linked lists and insertion at beginning. So, a typical data structure for a linked list looks something like this. So, you have a structure which contains two portions. One is the data portion and another is a pointer or to the structure of similar type that is struct link list is the type so it will contain a pointer to that typically it is named next now this data i have said here as integer but it can be anything it can be a string it can be a float it can be another structure or it can be combination of all various things okay now this is required so that you can point to the next element in the list and such structures are known as self-referential structures because they have a reference of an object of the same type. Basic operations on a linked list are uh, on a linked list uh, are insertion, deletion, search, and count. Now, insertion is uh, most complex of these because it can be at the beginning, it can be in between, or at the end. Now, typically library functions uh, abstract it. For example, if you look at STL, then it's abstracted. So you can give element, head, and position. And behind, in, behind the scenes, you can implement three different functions or different logic depending on the position. So <coughs> head pointer of a linked list is typically written as head or P. So we will use the name as head. Head is the first pointer of the linked list, of the first element. So as long as you have the pointer to first element, you should be able to perform all these operations. Now let's try to understand these operations in a graphical manner. I have uh, made some graphics for this. So in we will discuss insertion at beginning. So case one, when the list is empty. Now when the list is empty, head is null. So what you do is you declare a node temp of type LL that is LL pointer temp and then you allocate memory to it by saying temp is equal to malloc uh, uh, size of struct node and then you say temp data is equal to data. So I have data here and the next of temp is pointing to some value which we don't know as of now. So what we do is we say temp next is null and head is equal to temp. So it would start looking like this because head was initially null but now we say that head is equal to temp. So head will point to data and temp next this total the arrow and the box. The box is data and the arrow is the next. So this is the position final position after insertion. Now case 2 when the list is not empty. So what you need to do is uh, so what we did in the previous one was this, right? So in this, what we do is, instead of null, we say this is equal to head. Now, here also we can write head next is equal, temp next is equal to head because head is anyway null, right? So the clear code is temp next is equal to head. So data one is the new node, right? Temp is now containing data one. You allocate another node temp and assign temp next is equal to head and temp data is equal to data one so this is our new node this was the original list this is our new node temp which has got its data member as data one and we point its next to head so it is pointing here and then we move this arrow of head to data one by saying head is equal to temp one then it would look like something like this so this is the final piece of code of addition at beginning. So since you will be manipulating head pointer, therefore you need to pass its address and then you receive as a pointer to pointer. So we say, okay, you allocate temp when you receive a, a head pointer to pointer and then you take i which you want to store and then you say temp next is equal to star head that is uh, the address of head pointer to pointer and then you manipulate it and then you have the final code now let's see its complexity so remember these are line number 6 8 9 11 12 and 13 six lines so suppose cost for operations 
at line number 6, 8, 9, 11, 12 and 13 are C1 to C6, then the total cost is summation of Ci from i is equal to 1 to 6, which is a constant, right? Because all operations will have constant. There are no variables in this uh, algorithm, which let's say is k. So k will be m into big O1 for all m greater than k. Therefore, the order 1 is the upper bound, which is our complexity. So that's it for now. And uh, if you have any questions, you can come to my website here. I'll be posting the link of the video insertion at beginning here. So you can come here and you can ask your questions. So I'll, uh, for example, this would be the title. Mm. Linked list insertion at beginning. So this would be the title of the question. So you can come and search at Kunjika and then you can ask your question there. And source code, I'll finally put the entire source code at one place when I'll present the last video on linked list. So that time I'll give the code. This PDF also will have more pages and the final PDF will also be uploaded at that time. Thanks for watching the video. Happy programming.